Suffolk Pod Show is produced and managed by podtalk.co.uk. I'm Mark Mason. And I'm Susanna Hornby. Episode 21, Talking to Piers Day from Suffolk Hypnotherapy. He's a hypnotherapist and an NLP specialist, talking about how to keep a healthy and positive mind. Welcome back to the Suffolk Pod Show. Welcome back, Piers. Hi. Hi, and thank you for having me back. (laughs) It's a pleasure. Last time we spoke, we were sort of, well, in a positive mode. We thought we saw the horizon, or at least some sort of end of lockdown horizon. And here we are, back in what feels like a worse situation. I think the worst situation is mainly because it's it's winter and people get up in the dark and they go to bed in the dark. Mm. And it's not so nice to be out and about doing things. Mm. Certainly feels that uh, way. Yeah. I mean, I'm getting quite a few people at the moment who are getting quite housebound. Mm. They just say they don't want to go out because it's cold and they might actually catch you know, one of the variant diseases around that everyone's talking about. Yeah. It is that time of year. I mean, yesterday was Blue Monday. So I'd never heard of that before, and I started looking it up. And Blue Monday was apparently the most depressing day of the year. <laughs> uh, well, it's like I'd never actually someone some, some scientist somewhere has worked this out. Well, good on them. Mm. Um, I actually had a really fun day yesterday, so... I'm not depressed at all, thank God. Yeah, good. Well, you um, put that to bed then. The, uh, I, I don't know. Mondays are always quite blue. I, it's obviously, it's the third week of January. There, I mean, every year it's difficult in January. And this has just it's, compounded it, basically. Yes. I mean, every year you get to the, the end of December, beginning of January, and everyone said, this is going to be a new year. And if you look back at the things you were talking about or your social media, people talking about you know, 2021 is going to be the year. Mm. Well. Yes, it is going to be the year that we all have injections and we all are able to have a vaccine and hopefully be out out and about having a what I would call a relatively normal life. Mm. It seems like a straightforward choice to, to just go ahead and get the jab, but there are people who fear the vaccine. Yes, um, there are people who, I mean, you've got some people who are against the vaccine because they think it hasn't been researched enough. Mm. And I think we have to trust the people who run the country and trust the people who are advising them. Mm. And if they say it's safe, we just got to go with it. If we want to make progress and, and stop this pandemic. Mm. Well, I'm getting contacted at the moment daily, a lot of them quite elderly, mm. uh, obviously because everyone's being injected at the moment, um, but have got trypanophobia, which is a fear of injections. Oh my goodness. Um, and this is a problem which is going to affect everybody in due course because you are going to have to roll up your sleeve and they are going to have to stick a needle in it and inject you Mm. Uh, and this phobia is really really bad i mean it affects some people so badly um that they have to be almost tranquilized beforehand Mm. Uh, and talking to a couple of gps you know they said yeah they have some gas nearby for people who get into a panic just to calm them down Mm. that's terrible that's, that just makes it so good. I mean, yeah, I there's a fear you mentioned earlier of going out as well, and that combined with a fear of needles. I mean, this is this is just the toughest time. It is the toughest time, and I hate to say the the dear old press who are putting out all these things, and after all, they have to say something. They are breeding fear. Mm. All you actually have to do is look out the window and actually see that. Everything else in life is continuing quite normally. Mm. The birds are still flying, the clouds are still you know, chucking down rain, the roads are still slippery, and that sort of stuff. And you've got to start thinking, okay, this is only a pause in everyday life. Mm. You know, what we're going through now is, okay, it's, it's, it's going to be a year-long pause because I don't think much is going to happen b- before the end of March. Mm. we just got to say, okay, summer's on the way. We got through it in the summer. The days are getting longer. Mm-hmm. And I think people have come away with, I didn't see my family over Christmas. I didn't go to all the office parties. I didn't eat or drink as much as I usually do over Christmas, that sort of stuff. Mm. They need to almost snap out of it and smell the roses. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. And I think also people need to get over the fact, well, I do personally. I feel like I've been robbed of my festive season. Exactly. And if anybody follows me on, on Facebook or any of the social medias, you know, I just said, great, I'm looking forward to doing something on Midsummer's Day. Yeah. Because to me, that's that's the opposite of the spectrum, is 
if we can't celebrate now, well, fine, let's just delay it. Mm. Let's delay it summer when at least we've got hopefully good weather mm. and we can go out and we can get the water pistols out and we can get the pins <laughs> out or whatever, you, whatever float your boat, so to speak. And we can get out there and hopefully by then mix with our family and our loved ones. Mm. I'm sure we will be able to by then, she says. Yeah, because by then more and more people would have been vaccinated. Yeah. So that's something that we are making progress. And whether you like the government or not, it's completely immaterial. We, they are making progress against this horrible thing. Mm. And, and people, as soon as you start talking in a more positive way, people automatically change. I mean, I was talking to somebody on a Zoom call the other day, and I said, right, look, they were saying, Piers, it's terrible. I've got nothing to look forward to. I said, look out the window. And they're lucky enough to have a nice garden. Look at the bulbs coming up. And they said, oh, yeah. I said, when were you last out in the garden doing some gardening? And they said, I haven't done it for ages. And I said, right, after this call, put your gla- put your gardening gloves on, <laughs> yeah, put, put your waves on, and get out there and just reconnect with the outside world. Mm. People are not very good at doing that because as soon as they leave the house, they have to mask up and it's quite confining mm. to get this sort of almost claustrophobic feel because they can't actually breathe properly. Yeah. And I, I was talking about uh, to a local builder and he says when he goes into town, he has problems breathing. Mm. I did a very quick, I think it was eight, nine minutes, little thing on him over, online and he rang me back later and said, Piers, I didn't have a tight chest at all. Interesting. It's amazing just what the mind is doing to our bodies. Yeah. And we've got to slightly reconnect the mind to the body and saying, it's getting better. Mm. And if you've got doom merchants around you, just tell them to shut up. <laughs> You're I, right. I, you I, are right. It's, every, it's so easy to do. Just say, look, I, I, don't, want to hear, I don't want to hear negative today. Mm. Let's talk about something positive. Whatever that positive is. And if you're lucky enough to be with another person, then that's very doable. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the first two lockdowns, I was by myself. This one, I've got my son living with me, mm. which is fantastic. I've actually got someone to, to, to talk to. But more than that, I can actually touch another human being. Mm. And that, to a lot of people, especially the elderly, is something that they are completely robbed of, is that feeling of, of that hug, that being touched. Mm. And I'm not talking anything derogatory or, or sexual or I'm talking about is actually just leaning on somebody yeah. or putting on somebody while they're cooking or whatever it happens to be. Mm. So personally, I feel now I have, I have more purpose because I'm doing a lot of the cooking and the cleaning and that sort of stuff, mm. which again, I'm really enjoying doing. It's not a chore on any sense of the word. Mm. It's just putting that positive twist on everything. You know, whether you're in the supermarket and some people say, I hate going to the supermarkets at the moment or the food shops because I'm worried about getting it. I said, yeah, but you can connect with other people. You can you can talk to people. Mm. There's an old lady looking at the bananas the other day <laughs> when I was in the low market in Berry, And I had a long conversation to her about the air miles that we use to get the bananas to the supermarket. <laughs> and she, I was talking to her. I said, do you live? And I said, yes, I do. But I come in every day. And I, I pick up what I want every day because I need the exercise mm-hmm. and I love talking to people. And I said, well, if I see you in here again, we'll, we'll go and have a conversation about the oranges and we both laugh. <laughs> and and that, took, that took, what, two minutes? Mm. But hopefully it gave her some pleasure. It is just reconnecting with everybody else. Mm. Uh, when I was in the market in Beres Nebens uh, a week ago, and just talking to some of the guys selling vegetables. And they said, yeah, they're selling to more more people, but very, very small volumes. Mm. And people come and buy two oranges rather than six because they want to come out and buy more on you know, at the weekend. Yeah. And that sort of stuff. And it is, it's just getting people back to a routine and giving them hope. Mm. And hope is what it's all about. And I mean, I'm, when I'm, I was talking to, uh, 16 year olds yesterday uh, and poor girls going through a bad time at home parents are sick to death of each other and I, she says I, I fear they're going to get divorced mm. and she started self-harming and I said get yourself in a position where you have people you can talk to friends you can talk to but not friends you, you can sit there and go life is so bad but friends who want to have a laugh and a joke mm. and that's a very different approach and I said just 
that PMA, the positive mental attitude, and just have a routine that you set yourself a goal, you're going to talk to six friends in three days. Oh, I don't want to do that. And I said, push yourself, six friends in three days, and those six friends are going to be people you don't normally talk to. I'm longing to hear the results of that because that's pushing her back into normality. Mm. And she spends a lot of her time because she can hear Ray's voices downstairs because, you know, everyone's lo- in, in lockdown. Yeah. And her room her room has become her world. And I said, you've got to break through that barrier and you've got to get out there and contact people in the outside world, not to say how bad it is, but just to have a laugh. Yeah. Um, I mean, my son and his mates, they do a quiz night every week. <laughs> yeah. And whoever wins it does the next quiz. And it, it, it's a way that they all, they're all over the country, some of them in, in, other, in other, other countries. And it's whether they make it every week or not, it's not, not important, but they all have an outlet and you can hear the laughter and everyone ribbing each other and that sort of stuff, which is what it should be. Mm. And that's the type of stuff you should do in the pubs or, or wherever with our friends. You can do it all online now. It's yeah. all there. Mm. And you really Just can listen. laugh because you are eye to eye contact with that person and you can connect. Yes. I mean, I, through through my work, I connect with people most days, you know, on the internet and, you know, I stare into the camera and, and help people. Uh, and it is, you can, it is, it is almost like being in the same room. Mm. You've just got to get used to it. Mm. And that's what it's all about, is using the technology that we have. I mean, if you go back 20 years, imagine we're having a lockdown then, but all you had was a dial, the old fashioned dial telephones. Mm. Yeah, and the cost uh, and, of the telephone call as well in the old days. Yeah, exactly. And you, st- you start looking about how lucky we are, if we're going to have a pandemic, how lucky we are with it now. Yeah. You can spend hours watching social media and TikToks and all that sort of stuff. But actually, that's not human contact. No. That's actually talking from within your shell because you're not connecting. You're just watching somebody on the screen. Mm. No it- conversation. Right. Mm, still a third party. Exactly. Yeah. Now, tips on surviving a lockdown. I know you've got many, but I know oh, you've got many. <laughs> and you're going to talk about wine, aren't you? Uh, I will talk about wine. Yes. Um, <laughs> rather than sitting down having wine every night, my suggestion mm-hmm. would be my suggestion would be something simple like water, fruit juice. Hmm. If you've got a blender, start making your own, what are these things called? Smoothies. Smoothies, that's the word I'm looking for. (laughs) And start experimenting rather than, oh, what have I got? Next time you shop, next time you're in the market, whatever it is, just just try some stuff, come out of your comfort zone. And one of the things I've been working with quite a few clients before Christmas and since Christmas is actually get online and learn something. Mm, I like that one. We've all got all this time. We've all got all this this time, which we hadn't normally got. Because mm. people say, oh, if I had more time, I'd be, I would learn the piano. I would read more books. I would do more exercise. You've got more time. Why aren't you doing them? Yeah, it's true. It's very, very true. We've all, we've all said it. Uh, I mean, the great outdoors is a fantastic place to be. Uh, go and, you know, we are under the, under the rules. We are allowed to exercise. Go for a walk. If you start looking now, as you walk along the hedgerows, when you, whether you're in, in town, whether you're on the countryside and you're walking around, things are beginning to change. Plants are beginning to have shoots on, mm. that sort of stuff. Start looking at normality. Try the breathing. When you're out there, try breathing in some fresh air because it's not the air that's inside, is inside your house. It's yeah. not central heated air. It's air that's blowing around. And if, if it's raining, put a waterproof coat on. Just go for a walk. Get out there. Mm. So I'd say the days of making excuses for not doing things is over because we have the time to do them. But can I not bring in how I feel mentally? I feel shattered. Why am I feeling so tired all the time? Uh, Because you're inside. Mm. Because you're not out there doing any exercise and your body gets quite toxic. Mm. But when you exercise, you increase your blood flow, your heart's beating, and you're, you're moving, the blood's moving around, putting ex- oxygen around the body. But at the same time, what it's doing is it's actually getting rid of all the toxins and all the waste materials from your muscles and from the system because your energy levels go down. As soon as you start exercising, you start that process of getting the body moving again. And that's what the body wants. Mm. 
Yeah, we're not going into hibernation. No. No, that's the, fact, we just want to come out of it. <laughs> exactly. So one of the reasons why a lot of people are very tired and bad-tempered is because then they're not actually using their bodies. Mm. A chap I was working with a couple of weeks ago got on a call, and I said, right, your job is to do half a mile today, a mile tomorrow, a mile and a half the next day, and each day do an extra half mile until mm. you get to files, and then time your five miles, and each day you have to do it quicker. Mm-hmm. Bringing in your personal it, best. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But what, what you're actually doing is you're not going, and that's, 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 that's a stroll, that's a walk, that's not a run. Mm. But get out there and reconnect with the outside world, because if you sit inside, it's rather like being, you know, your house becomes your prison. Mm. And all the, the air that you breathe is the air that's been circulating around the room through your central heating, you know, around the radiators and that sort of stuff. Mm. It's not what I call fresh air. No, it isn't. No, you put it like that. I'm I'm out of here after I've started. I've stopped speaking to you. I'm away. <laughs> uh, but that's what it is. It's, it is just a question of getting out. I mean, yes, there are a lot of people who can't get out. Mm. Whether you're ill and you're in bed or anything like that, mm. fine. Time will pass. If necessary, just take a chair and put it outside and sit in it. Mm. And as soon as you do that, your attention goes outwardly. So you see, I don't know the. The, on a day like today, which is very windy where I am, you see the weed, the leaves blowing, you see the trees moving, you see the birds flying, the pigeons and whatever flying around, and they look as if they're having quite fun in the wind. Mm. And you start, it starts just reconnecting you with the outside world. Because mm. if we sit and look at a screen all day, it is knackering. Yeah. yeah whether, whether the screen's your computer or television. Um, and yeah, we we do have things, they've been around for quite a long time, called books. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that's really so. I mean, how many of your listeners regularly read a book? Mm, good question. And it'd be interesting to find out, actually. Mm. Um, you know, whether you read just before bed, but if you're if it's quiet during the day, just read a book for a while. Get yourself, get your mind out of where you are. And I'm a great believer in meditation for helping people. Whatever meditation, whether it's a walk, whether it's sitting, you know, cross-legged in a Zen position, or whatever it happens to be, you can very easily just get out of the present situation and rejuvenate yourself. Mm. And it doesn't it doesn't have to take long. No. So surviving surviving this, and we've been doing it since the moment you were born, is called breathing. And breathing is something which we take take for, for you know, so naturally. So take deeper breaths. And if you go onto the internet, and if you go, anyone's on the internet, if you go onto my YouTube channel, uh, which is Piers Day, obviously, I do some breathing meditations on there. And there are lots of people doing it. Mm. There's no excuse. All it is, everything's out there in order to help you meditate, to help you survive, to help you get through. Mm. And it is a question just coming, to stepping one little bit out of your comfort zone, whether that's going for a walk whether that's going up and down stairs a few times, whatever it is to start being slightly more active than you were before. Mm. As I mm. beforehand, had to come out of hibernation. Mm. And like you said earlier, which I think was just as, just as important, is smile and try and laugh with somebody else. Because that is, yes. a, it's addictive laughing and, and you can feel it making you feel great. Yes, it takes, it takes more muscles to frown and look sad than it does actually to smile. Dr. Now retired Dr. Mark Chambers has a very good way. He says, put a pencil in your mouth. <laughs> just across your mouth. <laughs> and it makes you and you've created a smile. Yeah. <laughs> it is really silly, but it's perfectly true. It takes that frown away. And as soon as you start smiling, you release happy endorphins into your system and yeah. everything kicks off much better than it did before. Yeah. Brilliant. Piers, you have moved, I think. Well, I know you're working from home, obviously, at the moment in lockdown, but haven't you moved your surgery? I'm basically working pretty well only at home at the moment mm. uh, because, number one, I want to catch a cave with myself, and number two, I don't want people to catch it. Mm. So, yeah, I'm working at home. I work, I live in Wepstead near near, near Bowes and Evans. Mm -hmm. Just, I, I do enjoy working from home yeah. because what I, it, it cuts out on a lot of transport time, so I actually have more time for me. Mm-hmm. 
between sessions, I get up and I go for a walk around the garden or I take the dog for a walk or I do interesting things like laundry. (laughs) (laughs) Have you got around Um, to ironing pillowcases yet like I have? (laughs) No, I've got a wonderful big thing in the in the kitchen. It's called an arga because it ah, came with the house. Right. And if you fold them right and leave them on, then you come back in the morning and it's all the ironing's all done for you. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm lazy. Um, but no, I have moved. And again, if you don't move your mind in with a business in a new direction, because if people don't want to come into town and people can't come into town because of rules, you've got to find a way of helping people. Mm. Some of the people I do help are people who are really at their wits' end, you know, who have been semi-suicidal. Mm. And if I wasn't available on the phone or on on Zoom, etc., uh, we would lose people, which is not which is not what I'm about. So I make myself available. Mm. I know you do, and you're are you still working with the NHS. Still working with the NHS. Um, I think I've clocked up is it 230 odd hours. I think I've done so far mm. with NHS frontline workers. Just and all, all I'm doing is helping them keep at their keep at their posts because mm. they are working under so much stress and strain at the moment. I don't charge them. I just say, right, what is it you need to be able to go to work tomorrow? Oh, Piers, I need more hope. And actually, what what the the the, the big word people call it confidence. I don't believe in, I don't believe in confidence. I just say I'm more into courage to face the problems than anything else. Mm, they are incredible people. Oh, they are. And you know, you, you start talking to them about the hours that they're doing and how their job has changed. Because I think I said this in this last in the last podcast. They are not part of the army because the army's taught how to dodge bullets. Mm. They are taught that the, you know that you know, your bullet has got to hit the enemy before the enemy hits you, so to speak. Well, that's pressure. And suddenly these lovely doctors and nurses, whether they're whether they're people cleaning the loos in hospitals, whatever it is, they're suddenly on the front line. Mm. And yeah, they are having to dodge bullets, so to speak. And a lot of people who walk in apparently to hospital are so ungrateful for what happened, what they're doing. They treat them like dirt. And I just personally think that's unacceptable. Well, that's I think if somebody, Oh, it is. If somebody is trying to save your life, uh, just be nice to them. Um, I heard of somebody quite recently who broke their cracked their cracked their wrist down the, the top of the arm, whatever that bone's called, where the where, where the wrist joins, mm-hmm. and they had to wait for I think four hours in A and E, and they were getting really upset. And they said, "No, there are COVID patients as we have to get you know in, and we have to make sure everyone else is secure before we see you." Because we, you know, we we got to keep you clear. And they said, "You know, but I haven't got time to sit here and wait." <laughs> 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 uh, I think if you've got time to fall off a ladder or whatever, whatever they did to, to break your wrist, you've got time to wait. Mm. Whether they were missing Emmerdale or not, I have no idea. But uh, <laughs> people do become very ungrateful, partly because they're in pain. But I think people have got to start thinking in the bigger picture. Mm. It's no longer me, me, me. It's it's more of a community. I mean, I've certainly noticed in the you know on the community websites and group chats that people have become a lot more caring a lot more thoughtful about their neighbors and, and locals which i think is fantastic because I, th- I think as a society we were slightly moving away from helping each other and this is why i think that you know one of the the good things that will come out of out of this if anything good comes out of this is actually people talking to each other more i'm gonna say I'm gonna, there's a couple of things i'm gonna do now after speaking to you i'm gonna one go for a walk two smile a lot more at mark and Three, I'm going to ring up a friend who I think is on their own and may need a chat. Yeah, because I mean, whether they're on their own or whether they're with a couple, just, you know, with, with somebody else, just mm. having a chat to somebody else other than your, your partner mm. or, or whoever, whoever you happen to be with is often what it takes. Just it puts a spring in your step. Mm, it does. Piers, thank you very much for the chat. It's been really interesting as again. And I'm also going to work on my breathing how do we get in touch with you? How does anyone get in touch with you if they need some need to talk to you? Uh, if anyone needs to talk to me, if they look up www.suffercatematherapy.co.uk mm-hmm. and all my contact details are there. Well, well done for what you're doing. Ah, thank you. Because um, what people can do is they can download the podcasts and put them in their their phones and listen to them while they're walking. But most people will listen to podcasts while driving. So if they do it while they're walking, it's getting them out of their comfort zone. Lovely. Thank you for your time and we will speak to you again 
in a couple of months. Have another catch up. Thank you very much. Take care. Thanks, Piers. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Suffolk Pod Show. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or you can visit our website, podtalk.co.uk. And here's our disclaimer The Suffolk Pod Show will not be held responsible for any omissions or errors in its podcast. The Suffolk Pod Show is produced purely for entertainment purposes. Views and opinions are that of our own or that of our guests. <laughs> <laughs>